play ball. And that's baseball, but football. Let's go hike. Okay? I'm not a sports guy, by any means. I do have a good sports movie, though. You know, this goes on the list of top sports movies for me. This, Miracle. I even selected my top sports movies. You know, uh, I should do like sports movies thing. You know what I mean? Sports movies. I've heard Warrior is a good one. But I haven't checked it out. Just Rocky is a good sports movie. Boxing is a sport, right? Okay, Shaq. Golf's a sport, technically, right? Uh, but, yeah. Hold on. Just a bit match point to it. We have to have a decisive winner here. We cannot do a countout. Damn it. Okay, so. This movie caught me off guard. In sort of a good way, but it caught me off guard because this. The ending caught me off guard, I should say, because I wasn't expecting this. It also caught me off guard with some of the casting in this. You have Garrett Hedlund, who I, I know from Tron Legacy, been in other stuff. He's one of the main football captain guys in this. Uh, Billy, Billy Bob Thornton, of course. Uh, Lucas Black. Billy Bob Thornton is the coach Gaines. And he's great in this movie. Billy Bob Thornton is great. I think he's a great actor. He would also play another coach in the Bad News Bears. But if I, if I, excuse me, if I eventually do Bad News Bears, it's going to be the Walter Matthau one. Because that's the classic one. I'm not going to do the Billy Bob Thornton one. Sorry. I want to see the original first. It's the one people hear. It's a classic. I'm just saying. But, uh. So, yeah. But Billy Bob Thornton's great in this movie. I think he's a great actor. Uh, Bad Sam is another one I think he's pretty funny in. But this one is a very serious movie. It's one of those. Inspirational sports movies, which is why the ending, if you know the ending, it threw me off. Because I wasn't expecting it. We'll get there. But there's Lucas Black from the Fast and Furious movies. Uh, Lee Thompson Young. I know from the famous Jet Jackson, as well as being in other shows, who tragically committed suicide at the age of 30... 29, excuse me. And... Yeah, he's in this movie, and it always makes me kind of depressed to see him and stuff. Like, oh, he's in this. And this character's kind of a goof. Isn't it Comer? 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 Whatever you pronounce his name. There's a thing. There's a weird thing in this where, like, they want to send him in to replace the other guy because the other guy is, you know, he's been playing all game, and he's kind of hurt. But he can't find his helmet anywhere. So they send the other guy back in, and he gets injured. And then they blame the coach. And it's like, well, the other guy couldn't find his damn helmet. And I don't know if they ever addressed why he couldn't find his helmet. He just couldn't find it. I don't know. Uh, but uh, this movie is the distinct, the, 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 gets the distinction to be the first movie to get my Brown Down Award. Uh, anytime a movie has Amber Heard in it, we're going to give it a Brown Down. And she has a small little cameo role with Garrett, Helen's girlfriend in this. Quick quick scene, but it gets a quick brown down for me. So there you go. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I've been thinking about doing something if I ever like, what I, I have to say something about her being in this movie. I can't just ignore it. So I figure from now on when Amber Heard pops up in a movie the brown down award will be awarded. So there you go. The brown down. And yes, I took that from what culture ups and downs with Simon Miller? So what? Brown down also means, you know, she shit in Johnny Depp's bed. So brown down for her. But, uh, yeah. And then Tim McGraw plays the stereotypical abusive dad character. Oh, you can't hold on to the ball? He duct tapes his own son's gear head in his character. Uh, hands with duct tape. Who you hold on the ball now? And it's like, okay, I don't. I, I get, so this is based on a book, and it may be based on a true story. I'm not exactly sure. Does it say? Does it say on the cover? It's based on a best-selling book. It's a true American story. Okay. 
So it's based on a book that's based on a true story, I guess. So maybe this is what this character was going through, but it's just a stereotypical dad character in these movies that, you know, single dad, drunk, abusive, kind of thing. If there's one criticism that I have is that there's not really a girlfriend character. There's a female character. Connie Britton is in this, which is really great because she was also in the TV show playing two separate different characters, by the way. But, I don't know. There's no girlfriend character. Like, uh, you see Amber Heard for like five minutes, maybe. And I don't think we see her again. This I, I wasn't paying attention after that. Anyway, but, uh, and then you have another female character, another blonde who hooks up with Lucas Black, but I don't think we see her again. And it's all just follows the football players after that. So it's really weird that the sports movie wouldn't have the girlfriend or love interest cheering on the football player guy. But seeing where the movie ends, I think I kind of get it. You know? And from here, it's a typical football film. But I will say, it has a great score. The acting in this is fantastic. And... You have, like, the football scenes, it feels like you're actually watching football. They do a great job of making it look like it's a real football game. You have, like, the commentators saying stuff, and, you know, it feels like a real football game. Every time there's, like, football scenes, it feels real. You know what I mean? The injuries feel real. The impact of the tackles and everything feel real. The nail-biting tension feels real. It all works very well. Now, let's talk about the ending, because I want to get to it here. They lose the game. It's the... Our team versus the Dallas... Versus Dallas Carter, right? The Permian... The Permian versus the Dallas Carter. And Dallas Carter wins the game, just barely, though. And it shocked me. I'm like, did, did they just lose? What? What? Huh? I actually had to rewind it so I could see it, my, see it again. I'm like, they lost. What? What kind of inspirational football movie is this? Sports movie that the team we're following doesn't win. I was ready to just, you know, be like, of course they win. It's an inspirational sports movie. But it doesn't. And, but I do feel like you can say, oh, but Rocky didn't win in his movie. But that wasn't the point of that. Rocky was all about going the distance, proving you could fight with the best. He could fight with Apollo and keep up with him, and he did. This is different. This is, they, in my opinion, they should have won. And I get it. It's based on a book. It's based on the real life, whatever. I still think they should have won. And this is a movie I think maybe they could embellish and say they won anyway. But then again, what backlash would that bring? You know, where they're like, hey, what? Well, in a book and in real life they lost. Why did they win? Because it's a movie. But I don't know. And you know, maybe that is no, no, representative of real life because, yeah, there's winning and there's losing. It's not an inspirational, you know, real life isn't. That inspirational. Sometimes you get some inspirational stories, but, you know, it's a 50-50 crapshoot of whether or not you're going to win or not. Most of the time, you lose. And that's what this represents. Sure. So I get it. I get it. You got to go by what really happened. It's fine. But it sucks, you know, from a viewer of a movie... From the standpoint of a movie viewer, it sucks because most of these players were seniors and now they're not going to get to go to the championship. You know, and it's one of those inspirational sports movies where it's just like, you want to see them win. You want to see them succeed, you know? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it does go on to say that, and I don't know if this happened in real life, it feels like I don't know, that Gaines, along with Cormer, who's the only one that stay behind, I guess, will go on to win the state championship the next year, the next season. And it's like, yeah, but that seems a little bit too, too little too late there, but, you know, it's fine. 
yeah, this movie was uh, good. Uh, inspirational football sports film. I am going to give it a middle of the road, though, because it's not one that I'm going to go back and watch. I'm not, like, Rocky is probably one of the ones I'm going to go back and watch first when I want an inspirational movie. And even then, I don't watch the first one very often. I go for Rocky 3 or 4 because they got more than Rocky 4, mostly because it's got the most happening in it. But it, it was still a good movie. Don't, don't get me wrong. When I give it a middle of the road, it's still a good movie. But, like, I think of other football movies like Varsity Blues and uh, even The Best of Times, which I recently reviewed a few months ago with Kurt Russell and uh, Robin Williams, was a great movie. Great football movie. It wasn't based on any true stories, but there's, you know... This is up there with the best, but it's one of the best. But it, for me, it, if I was to do like, if I was to do a top ten, it would be in a top ten, but it wouldn't be in a top five. You know what I'm trying to say? Like this is, it's got good acting, good score, good, you know, good football scenes and stuff. And but you know, it just, I don't know. It's not what I'm gonna reach for. Like, I'm gonna reach for Rocky or Varsity Blues. Or even Miracle, my ducks <laughs> first, you know, if I want a sports movie, which I don't often go for, but you know, I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, it's the middle of the road. So we only got one movie left, and that's Secondhand Lines, which I will be reviewing soon, and I'll get that done. And then I'm just gonna, I have a project I'm gonna work on, but I think I'm gonna postpone it till next year. The reason being is it's like a three part series that I'm doing. With 30 movies all together split into three parts. So I feel like I want to wait until the new year to start it. So I'm just going to do some random stuff in September. You get Full Moon Fridays, but I don't think I'm going to do 2v Tuesday. I think I'm going to wait on 2v Tuesday. I may do 2v Tuesday. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. 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 I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it in October. So maybe I'm just take a month off of 2v Tuesdays. But sometimes you need a break. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, this one's next, but then I'll do a ranking. But uh, so, actually, actually, I should mention this was directed by Jeff Berg, who, or Peter Berg, excuse me. Is it Peter Berg? Hold on. Where is the? Is it here? Hold on. Because he directed another one of the movies, so I'm just trying to. Here. Peter Berg, excuse me, I don't know why I said Jeff Berg. I was thinking Jeff Bergman, who was the voice of uh, uh, Bugs Bunny. But uh, Peter Berg, who also did Hancock, which I should have showed you, but I put it back in the box. Put the Hancock bag in the box. But yeah. So, what are your thoughts on Friday Night Lights? Leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.